Hello and welcome back to the channel. So in this today's video, we are going to create a task manager app and this app will be going to the full stack app. In that app, user can perform a full crowd operation like create, read, delete, update. I have also added a login so user can log in and log out with their Google ID or email or GitHub. So let's take a quick tour of our app that uh, we are going to build today. This is a simple task app where we are representing our data with the help of data table component. Here we can obviously filter out our data like in ascending order or descending order or we can do the same with or completed or incompleted like that. And now let's try to create our task here. Let's add uh, something like task one and this is description and let's select a due date. So suppose I will take a 22 and click on that submit button. So this will take some time and uh, this will add our task and uh, here this is a live URL. So this application is deployed so you can also test it. So when I will click on that next page. So here you can see that our task is added and we are also getting a proper pagination. So you will see everything how we will implement this whole thing. And uh, let's go to the page one again and select there like 10 data. And now suppose uh, we wanted to edit our to do. So let's go to that to do again and uh, let's click on that edit button and let's select uh, let's uh, let's say that task edited and here we can also say that edited or uh, let's mark it as completed or click on that save. So here we are also getting a loading effect and this task is updated. So here we got our task there. We are getting it on that place because here we have applied this filter. So let's make it default. So now we'll see that uh, we got our task there and uh, obviously we have seen that edit button and let's try to delete that task. So I will just simply click on that delete button. So right now here we also got a pop up or like alert mode. Uh, do you really want to delete your task? So let's click on that delete button. So yeah, this is loading and now our task is deleted. So everything is happening on real time on our database. Our This is changing the data in our actual database. And let's also see this feature like suppose I have selected this data and this data and see there like if I will unselect there. So see this is gone and if I will select it again like uh, this one and uh, we can select it many data as we want like I've selected two data and click on that delete button. And uh, now this is saying that uh, this will delete the two tasks from your server permanent. So let's click on that delete button. So this is deleting and uh, these tasks are deleted and we are also getting a proper successful toast. We can also update our task from there. Let's say that this task is completed. So just click on that one. This will take some time to load and this task is completed. And this is the feature of our data table component. Let's also take a look of that one. Like we can also filter by titles. So suppose uh, I want to filter out that data. So we can also simply search like update. So here uh, this data is filtered. And right now I have logged with that username. So let's log out and uh, try to log in with different, different account. So let's click on that sign out button. So here we are also getting a proper loading effect and now click on that sign in so basically this is our home page if you are not logged in so first of all you will see that screen now suppose i wanted to log in with google so i will just simply click on that uh, sign in with google and previously i have logged in with that uh, my youtube account now i wanted to log in uh, it with my personal account so let's click on that uh, first account and now you can see that we have logged in with our different account here we also got our username and here we don't have any data so let's try to add our data on that account so i will just randomly add any data or any date and click on that submit so this will take a loading and this data is added so let's try to add another data and here i have also added another condition like uh, only this title is important like suppose uh, you wanted to add your task and you are in a hurry and for now you don't want to add a due date description or anything so uh, like say this is a uh, title and click on that submit. So for now I have just make that mandatory. This title is only important like uh, this title field is mandatory, mandatory to fill. And uh, let's try to add a new task here when I will try to click on that submit button. So see here we got an error like uh, here I need to must add a one string 
or <laughs> so that our title will be uh, mandatory so let's try to add, add again something and uh, when i will click on that submit so this will submit and see when we don't have any description so this will uh, say like we don't have no description okay and uh, when the due date is not set so this will say that not set so i hope i have explained everything on that one now let's take a look of our database so this is our database of that application so as you can see there here we have a app users we have a app task these are the user ids and uh, these are the tasks and these are the normal ids that is assigned according to the task and uh, these are the two users that have logged in our application and likewise we have accounts uh, like uh, from which account they have choose like google or github or normal email now let's see the another feature of that application so let's click on that sign out and click on that sign in now i wanted to sign in with my email id so let's click on that sign in first of all obviously we need to create that user account so click on that create an account so now here we are getting options to create our account so let's give a email and uh, let's give a password and also give a confirm password so suppose if i am not giving a confirm password and uh, this password is not matching and let's try to create uh, let's try to click on that register so we will get an error like uh, this password is not matching and let's pass a correct password and click on that register so this is loading and we are getting an error like this email id is already in use so let's go to our database and uh, let's delete that user so this is my user so let's delete that user and after that uh, let's go to our application and now i will again create account so we were getting error because i have already logged in uh, with that email id uh, using a google now we are creating a normal email id so let's click on that register so as you can see that this email id is registered and we are logged in with that account and uh, no i don't want to save that password and now here we got our empty data because this user haven't created any data and because we have logged in with that email id and password we haven't added that like username so that's why here we are rendering a random username and now let's again try to add a new task and description something like that so this task is added let's try to add something else and uh, this description and uh, let's set uh, some due date submit so this task is also added now let's go to our database and check so let's refresh there so as you can see that here we got that email id and here when i will click on that app task so this is my task like how many tasks have users have created so click on that so then you will see that here we are getting that uh, that user that user id have 15 have created these two tasks and we can also see these task table from there so these are my all tasks like uh, this will include all the users like this is my user id 13 and 15 and uh, when i will go to the users so let's see like uh, how many data have uh, created that react uh, with utkarsh email id so let's click on that app task so now you can see that all the tasks related to that users so i hope you got all the idea what we are going to build today so let's get started so let's get so let's so let's go and start the party so for this application we are going to use that repository so on that repository authentication is already set up so for this application i've also used that repo that is next drizzle lucia sqlite template and uh, this repo is created by web dev cody i watched the youtube video of that guy and he have given that repo link on that description so with the help of him this project is possible uh, so thank you web dev cody for this one so what uh, we will do we will clone that repo and uh, we will build our project so let's click on that code and uh, copy the github repo link and now go to the place where you want to create your project so suppose i wanted to create my project on that place so here i will open a cmd and uh, let's add a command git clone and paste that uh, repo link so this will clone that repository and this repo is cloned so let's go inside that repo and uh, press enter now let's open a uh, vs code on that location so code dot so this will open the vs code so to run that project we will first of all open that readme.md so there this guy have provided like uh, this is the nextjs template which, which include the following tech like result nextjs lucia sql light side cn and react hook form and server side action validation and i don't know about that tried architecture example and this is a recent emails so with the help of that we will send uh, emails and i haven't shown you one thing like we can also do a forgot password uh, so this will send a link to our email to reset our password and here we have also applied a google auth github auth 
magic link and email id password and password reset that i have told you before and account registration and confirmation email we can also confirm our email like uh, this email is verified or not something like that so let's try to run our project so if you will go to that dot env dot example we need to fill all these envs so we need to provide google client id google uh, secret github and uh, github id after that e uh, email server user that we will get it from recent i will show you how we will get all these things so this email server user is recent and uh, here we need to add our api key for our recent so this will help us to send an email from our applications and here we need to add our database key and database url if we are using a live database so what uh, we will do we will fill all these apis and after that we will test our application and uh, we will deploy our application on Vercel. and if everything will be fine then we will start building our task manager app so first of all what we will do we will create a .env file and on that .env first of all i will copy all these things and paste there so for now we will use that file.localdb and uh, this file will be created somewhere there around when we will run that command so this is only for like if we are using a local database and if we are using a local database so we don't need that uh, db auth token so first of all we will test our application on local after that uh, uh, we will connect it with perso so for now let's comment this one and now we need a google id so let's again go to that readme file and here we will find that like uh, if you want to add a login you will need to set up a google project and create some keys so we need to copy that uh, url and from there we will create a project and all these things so let's go to your browser and uh, on that new tab i will add that link so i have already logged in with my email id so suppose if you are not logged in with your email id so you need to log in with your email id and now here i have already created the uh, like lots of project you can create your project uh, click on that new project and uh, give your project name so this is a like task manager app and uh, simply click on that create and this is creating our task manager project so let's select our task manager app and uh, now click on that uh, configure consent screen so click on that one so click on that external and create now this is shows in the content screen and helps the user to know around the consent so uh, let's give our app name like this is a task manager app and user email supported so i will use my personal email id and for now we don't want any logo and these things are not mandatory so i don't want to use so for now we won't use that authorized domain name when we will deploy our application so then we will configure that so for now let's delete that one and on the place of that email id i will add my email id and uh, click on that save and continue and now just click on that save and continue and uh, select all the default users and uh, for now we want to just save and continue and uh, back to dashboard and let's click on that publish app so push to production and now click on that credentials and uh, click on that manage accounts so now let's create a credentials for this app so we want to create our OAuth client id click on that one and uh, we want to use a web application and now we have to add uh, authorized javascript origins so for that let's go to the code and check that readme so this is the for for now we will use that local host so let's click on that one and this is added so authorized redirect url so like uh, when our app is authorized so after that we need to use a redirect url there so as you can see there on this documentation so this is our redirect url so let's copy this one and uh, add it there so this is added and just click on that create button so now we got our client id and secret id so let's simply click on that client id and go to your env and this is my google client id so i will add that client id there and uh, client secrets let's copy that client secret and add on that place so we have added our google client id and google secret now we have to add our github client secret and uh, client id so let's add a github client id and secret so for that one let's go to your github account like uh, this is my github account and click on that right hand side your profile icon and uh, go to your settings and go to a developer setting and now we have to go to that oauth apps and here like i have created that lucia auth so i will create a new auth app and uh, let's give your application name so this is my task app and uh, home page url so our home page url is localhost so let's copy that uh, url from there and add it like that and no need of description and now we have to again add a authorized callback url like after the successful authorization where this will redirect us so like we have added on our google auth so this will be exactly like that so we just need to replace that google with our github like that and uh, let's click on that register application so this app is registered now we need a key so now this is our client id for our github so let's copy the client id and go to our code and go to the env 
and here i will add a client id and likewise we need to also add a client secret so click on that generate a new client secret and i need to authenticate it with my mobile so after verifying my authentication i got the client secret so let's copy that client secret secretly and here let's paste it there so here we have set up our uh, google id and github id and uh, we don't have to change this one so now i need to add my email server password and uh, email server host will be this smt dot recent and you know we don't need to change this one so we need to change this email from and this password so for that one i need to go to that recent website so let's go to the google and search for recent so basically this recent is a uh, our email so like with the help of that recent uh, we can send an uh, email uh, from our application from our web app so now i need to create a new api so let's go to the api and create a uh, api key so i need to give a uh, name for my application so this is my task manager app and i wanted to give a full access and click on that add so this is my api key so i will copy the api key and go to my code so let's paste it there and now let's click on that done and here we need to change our this domain name so for now here we can change our uh, this default text so like when we will send a mail uh, like forward password or something like that so we will get our mail from that so let's change this to like what is our app name our app name is like task our task manager app and uh, this will be no reply and this is a mandatory like this is our domain name so this is the main part and uh, for now we can't uh, give uh, any domain name like we wanted to use a free service so for now we must have to give that recent dot dev and all the setup is completed now let's again go to that readme and now what we need to do so first of all we need to install all the packages so i will open my terminal so let's move our terminal on the right hand side now we need to do a npm i so this will install all the necessary package that we need for this application so our all the packages is installed now again go to that readme file after that we need to use that command npx result push so this will create a sqlite database so now as you can see there we are not getting any file if we will go to the env we are not getting any file with the name of that file colon local.db and when i will use that command let's uh, enter so now we got a file local.db so for now we haven't set up only one thing on our env env that is database url and db token db auth token so we will also set up this one in a while so first of all let's uh, run our application and let's see everything is working fine or not and before that uh, let's again go to the readme and see okay so everything is done now we need to do npm run dev and this one so our app is running on localhost 3000 so go to the localhost 3000 and enter so now it means we have set up our env and everything is fine so we have successfully set up our authentication now let's uh, test this authentication is working fine or not so i will try to sign in with google so let's click on that one and for now i will select my youtube account okay continue so now uh, this is working fine and here's the dashboard page and we need to build our task manager app there like uh, after the login user will see that screen okay now let's log out and uh, try to see that github thing is working fine or not so let's click on that sign in with github okay so this is also working fine so because i've already logged in in that browser with my github account so this github flow is also working fine so now what we need to do we need to focus our main application so uh, let's close all these files and save and uh, first of all go to the source and we need to go to that db and we need to find out that schema so in that schema file we have all the schema i mean we have all the tables that is created on our database so like this is user accounts and uh, magic links table reset tokens table and likewise we have profile and session so let's open a drizzle studio so that we can see all the tables so let's open a new terminal there and i will type npx npx drizzle create studio and enter let's copy that url and go to your browser here we can check our database so we have for now two accounts that is uh, app account and user have logged in with google and github and this is the user id and uh, this is the session and likewise we have all the tables and uh, if you will see there so here we are getting a table name like app accounts app magic app profile and when we will check the code so here uh, we have already written a app so if i will remove that app so we have changed our schema now whenever we are changing on the schema file so we need to run that command so first of all i will stop that server for our drizzle studio and go to that readme file and uh, we need to run that command so we need to create that command so copy that command and paste it there and enter so whatever changes we have made so this will update so on that terminal like this is asking do you really want to rename so I'm, i will just press enter 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 so we don't have to worry for now because we don't have any data for now 
and uh, let's reset everything okay i think this is not changed so let's try it again and let's rename so yes i wanted to remove the four tables enter yeah so all the changes are applied now we will again run that npx result get push now everything is fine now let's again check our studio so we will run that npx result kit studio and enter and again go to that url so copy that url and go to your browser so this is that url so for now i will just refresh and see for now we don't have any data like uh, all the data is deleted from our database so let's go to our application again and refresh again let's try to log in with okay let's try to log in with github and yeah we have login with github and log out now let's try to log in sign in with google so youtube account continue so this flow is also working fine so now everything is fine now uh, what we will do we will try to connect our application with our live database and after that we will deploy and after that we will start building our task manager app so let's go to the terso we will basically our main data will be stored online that is terso so let's go to your browser and search for terso so SQL like for production and uh, click on that login if you are uh, doing it first time so you have to click on that sign up so I have already done a sign up so I will click on that login and uh, for now here I have created a one database and now I wanted to create a new database so click on that new database and let's give that task manager app and create database and uh, this is my task manager database and generate token so this is my database url so let's copy that uh, database url and go to your env and in the place of that url for now i will comment that one and add that url and save and again generate token so expire never and uh, read and write generate token so this is my token copy that token and uh, again i will comment it for now and this is my token so let's save and uh, see here we got our tables or not so click on that edit tables so for now here we are not getting anything let's stop that again and we need to migrate our uh, use that command again that is uh, npx result kit push so everything is done there now go to your online this is my online database and let's refresh okay yeah see so we got our all the tables there accounts magic links profiles and all this everything and now if i will go to my local host and uh, here we are getting an error so let's refresh okay so we have switched to online database so that's why we were getting an error now what i will do i will sign in with my google again so let's continue and yeah so now go to that uh, Terso database and let's refresh so as you can see there on the accounts we got a one account and user is logged in with uh, google this is my account type and if we will go to the users so this is a user details email id and email is verified or not and all these things so now it's time to deploy our application on Versal. so first of all we will push all of our code on github before that we need to also do one more thing we need to change that repository name and we have to also remove that uh, git file from that so let's right click and reveal in explorer and first of all what we will do we need to find that dot git file this dot git file will contain all the git related information uh, like uh, who have created that uh, repository and all this stuff so what we want we, we wanted to initialize this repository from the start uh, like for our repository so that's why we need to delete that one so simply delete that folder and now i need to also change that uh, folder name so this is our so we need to close our uh, vs code so let's close this one and write again and open right click open in a vs code Control j so I need my terminal on the right hand side. So panel position and click on that right. Now, first of all, let's check everything is fine or not. NPM run dev and uh, go to your browser. And this is my local host refresh. So everything is fine. So as you can see that on that terminal. So let's close that terminal. And what we will do now, we will build our application and see uh, we are getting any build issue or not. So for that, we will run NPM run build. So it means everything is fine and we can finally deploy our application. So first of all, we will initialize our repository. So click on that icon and click on that initialize repo repository. And this is first commit and enter and publish branch. So for now, I will make my repository private. And after that uh, video recording, I will make it public. So click on that uh, private. And now I need to deploy my application on Vercel. So let's go to the browser and search for Vercel. So go to that Vercel.com and first of all login with your account so 
log in with my account and now click on that add new project and uh, click on that import task manager app so i don't want to change anything there but i wanted to add the environment variables because uh, because without the environment variables our application will won't run or build successfully so let's go to code go to that env and copy all the env like that simply copy and uh, this is my environment variables and paste it there so here we have pasted all of our environment variables and now we can deploy our application there is a one problem we need to change that host name so we will change our uh, host name after our application is deployed or uh, let's see where where we are using that host name so i will simply search it for global so we are using on that environment variables and on our magic link so this will mainly work uh, like uh, when we will send an uh, email or something like that so here we are also using it for emails so first of all let's deploy our application and then we will get a domain name after that uh, we will change that domain name with that host name so now our application is deployed successfully as you can see that we also got uh, that home page so click on that one and i need to copy that url so I click. So this is my URL. So let's go to that Purcell again, and uh, go to that project settings. I need to go to that specific project, and after that, go to that settings environment variables, and uh, find that host name, edit host name, and change that host name to that host name, and save. And uh, we have to also do one more thing. So that is, we need to go to that uh, Google console. So go to your code again, and where's the that readme file? and this is that google console link and enter because let's uh, try to test our application okay so where's our app yeah so this is our live app and uh, when we will try to sign in with google so let's click on that one and uh, let's select continue so as you can see that so we are getting redirected to localhost because on that application on our google console we have added that url to localhost so that's why we need to go to that uh, google console and uh, we need to go to our task manager app and click on that edit and here we need to change that url on the place of that uh, we need to add sorry we need to add our uh, deployed url so this is our deployed url so let's copy that url and go to your google console and add on that place and our uh, base url will be that one we can also add multiple urls like that and here we can also do a uh, multiple urls so that we can easily test uh, on our local host and also on a deployed like that and click on that save and we have to do the same for a github so let's go to the github and uh, go to the settings and go to the developer settings go auth and this is my task app and here we need to change that home page url and uh, this redirected url so let me copy that again and go to that uh, github and this is my home page url so there's a one problem we can only add a one url like uh, we can after that we can't test it on localhost so there's a no problem for now because we are testing we are deploying our application so for now that's why i'm adding that url and after that let's also replace that url and uh, i think everything is fine and update application and now let's go to our app so this is our live url let's refresh and again try to sign in with google and uh, i will select my account continue i think i haven't saved that so again go to the google console okay yeah i need to click on that save so this is saved and uh, why this is not working so maybe we need to redeploy our application again so go to the develop deployment and uh, i will redeploy my app so our application is redeployed let's again test that it is working fine or not so okay for now let's uh, for now let's try let's see so this is working fine here i'm checking that online one okay let's log out and try to sign in with google or maybe this time so here <laughs> there is a note it may take a five minutes to few hours for setting to take effect so let's save and uh, let's try it again and if this time this won't work so we'll try after some time so this is my app let's refresh hard refresh and sign in with google okay so we will try it later so for now let's go to the local host so this is my local where's my local host close this live one and i think this is yeah so this is local host and now we will start building our actual application so let's again see what uh, we need to build so this is our ap actual application that we need to build to store these tasks we need to create a new table 
so let's go to our code and here we need to go to that source and db and on that schema like if you will check there carefully so we have all the tables there that is related to our database uh, likewise we have created our session main table that we need to check that that is user table and on that user table we are getting id auto increment and email and email verified and here if you will check there this is simply a uh, mysql code here we are just referring that integer first of all we are using that sql table creator and we are importing it from our result orm sql core and after that here we are creating that table that uh, this is the table name on our database and after that we are defining a columns of our table so likewise we need to create a user column so for that let's write export cons and this is this will be our task and again we will use that sqlite function and here we need to create our tasks table and inside that we need an id and our id will be show on our column with the name of id so that's why here we have given id and uh, mode number and this will be a primary key and this will be auto incremented and the second column that we need that is user id so that's why here we have given that user id and the type of that user id will be number and here we are referencing our that user id with our user table so as you can see that this is our users table and we are referencing with that users dot id and here you can see that this is the primary key there and uh, we are referencing with that one and here we are also giving that this will be a not null and after that we need a title for our task so simply title and this is a text type so that's why this is a text and obviously uh, this is the required field so that's why here we have written a not null after that description so description may be empty so that's why here we have just only given a text description likewise uh, after that we need a due date so due date will be stored in the form of integer on the sql we need to store it with the given type that is timestamp and likewise we also need that completed column like if you will see that on that ui this is a completed and uh, we have already added a due date and after that we are adding that created at like on which time this task is created so on that database this will automatically store that uh, time here we are getting an error so we need to import that sql from our diesel orm and this error is gone and here we are also adding that column updated at so let's save that now we have updated our schema and likewise here we are exporting our user type profile type so maybe we also need that uh, task type so here what we will do we will add our task like that and uh, type of task so let's save this so that's it for our schema now whenever we will change our schema so we need to use that command i think you already know so we need to go to that uh, readme file and uh, we need to use that npx result kit push copy and open a new terminal and by the way for now we are not running our localhost so let's run that command on that one so this will update on our database and uh, for now we have connected our online database so this will update everything in on our online database and now let's try to run our drizzle studio so that we can see that table so for that one we will uh, run npx drizzle kit studio and go to your browser and uh, now you can see that we have uh, another table that is tasks and for now we don't have any task so this is empty two users have logins so that's why we are getting that two emails and if you will see the account type so one user have logged in with google and one user have logged in with uh, github and this user have logged in with uh, github id so that's why here we are getting a github id and this user have logged in with google id so that's why we are getting that google id now we have created a table on our database now let's run our localhost server so i will open a new terminal there and npm run dev and uh, let's go to the localhost we have logged in and as you can see there here we are getting a default filecon icon so i wanted to change that icon so let's change so let's go to your code and uh, on our public folder this is our favicon icon that we need to change right now this is that icon so let's delete that icon and uh, i have pasted another icon that i wanted to use so let's save so if i will zoom it so this will look something like that and go to your browser and let's refresh so now you can see that this icon is changed and now let's compare like what we need to build so let's go to the live application so this is our live app this is that that we need to build so here what we need we need that data table so as you know i have already created a data table component that we can very smoothly use that data table component so for that let's see how we can integrate a data table component on this app so let's go to the youtube and go to my youtube channel react with of course and go to the channel go to the videos and this is that video how we can use this data table so on that video i have explained that how we can use the data table and i will again show you how we can use that data table that i have created so let's simply go to the description and this is the live demo so click on that one and uh, now this is the data table and uh, here we will use all these things we need that data table 
so if you will click on that code side so here i have uh, shown you all these things what we need to do so first of all we need to install that site cn and but if we will see there so site cn is already installed but if you are not sure so no need to worry so simply just copy that command and uh, open a new terminal and paste that command so for now i wanted to use the default theme and uh, for the color i wanted to use that uh, link and would you like to use css variables yes i don't know why this is asking again i think i thought this was already installed but uh, no need to worry uh, again after that we need to install all these things like uh, react icons then select table and lucid react so let's copy this so let's copy this installation command and uh, paste it there so this is also installed now let's copy that command so this will install all the required set in components so let's paste and now let's copy that command so this is installing uh, i think this component is already installed okay no need to worry we want it to overwrite so again this is uh, asking for button so yes now this is asking for input so yes for avatar yes now this now we have installed all the set in components now let's install additional packages so let's copy this one and like this and paste it there so we have installed all the required packages now what we need to do so simply if you will see that folder structure so first of all on that lib folder we need that utils.ps so simply click on that one this will redirect us to that file so this is our lib i think this is already installed our cn function so if we will go to that source and lib and yeah on that this have installed our cn function so basically this is our data table component that we required and in that application we are not using that calendar date picker so we don't have to install that calendar and calendar date picker we only need that folder that all these files and on the page.psx i'm showing how we are using that thing so first of all what i will do i will go to my code and go to that app and inside that app we have our page.psx so this is our main page and inside that if you will see there if our user is logged in so here first of all we are using a current user and if the current user is true so we are redirecting that user to a dashboard page and otherwise signing page so basically we have to work on that dashboard page so let's go to the dashboard page and here we are just getting a dashboard and all this stuff so what we need to do we need to create our data table component there so first of all we need to create that folder so i will copy that folder name and paste it there now this is a sample data so basically in the end we will get our data from the back end but uh, for the testing purpose uh, for now let's copy that data also so this is the data.json and uh, let's copy that data and paste it there and columns click on that columns so we got our columns and paste it there for now we are getting error so we will check it later what error we are getting so basically we will get errors like this is not imported or something like that so we will check it later so copy this data table column header we need to create that file insert the data, data table click on that one copy the code paste it there now we need a data table phase filter new file click on that one copy the code paste it there likewise pagination new file click on that pagination copy the code paste likewise we need a data table row action so copy that file name new file and uh, copy the code paste and likewise we need a data table toolbar so data table toolbar copy the code paste likewise we need a data table view options so new file and click on that one copy the code paste and user nav copy file name user nav and copy the code save data table so this is our main file our data table.tsx so let's copy the data table.tsx and copy the code of all the data table.tsx paste and uh, this is our data schema so copy from there and paste it there and copy the data schema from there save. and this is the schema for our uh, this data table so let's copy and paste lots of the file that we don't need so we need to filter it out but for now let's copy all the files and save okay so this is our schema i have copied the wrong file so let's save and now let's see what the error we are what errors we are getting so first of all let's go to the columns so expenses is not found so we have to also install that checkbox so first of all let's check this so first of all let's check this one we need to install that checkbox component of setcn let's go to the ui.setcn.com and we need to install a checkbox so copy the command from there and paste it there so our checkbox is installed and now we are getting error for this data table row actions so let's do one thing let's remove that line and uh, now we are we are getting that error data table directions and press control space and import so this error is gone and now we are getting that error data table columns header so let's also remove that one 
and uh, now see we are, we are getting that error so control space enter and for the schema here let's copy that expense and remove that line and now we are, we are getting error expense so control space enter and all the errors are gone from that file now go to the data table component so we need to import that drop down menu so i think everything is correct there so let's refresh let's reload our browser first of all and let's see again what is the error what is the error we are getting okay so i have just reload my vs code and i think we are not getting any error yeah everything is everything is fine now again go to that uh, browser and now go to that page.tsx and let's see how we are implementing that one let's just copy that data table component and uh, now we need to go to our dashboard page so close all that file and slash dash board page and import that data table control space and import that data table component here and now we need to import our columns and after that main thing is that we need to import our data so here we are importing our data with that function file function so let's try it. copy that one we need to create that function outside of that function and let's import that path and fs so we need to import that fs from fs and everything is fine i'm not sure about that part is correct or not i think this is not this path is not correct because we need to our file is inside that dashboard so here we need to also add a dashboard i think everything is fine now we can test our application yeah i think this is our local host so let's save and uh, go to our local host so this is our local host we are getting an error on line number 11 so basically we are not using a calendar picker so we are getting that error on our data table toolbar so yeah so we are not using a calendar for that application so let's remove that calendar and remove it from there also and let's save and see okay so now you can see that this is our dashboard page and we got our data table there so now we need to customize our columns and all this stuff according to our needs so as you can see there uh, this uh, filter descending descending everything is working fine now we just need to update our columns according to our needs so first of all we don't need that category and type so let's go to that uh, data table components header you can go to that data table component and here you will find a component name data table toolbar and here we are adding a logic for our input and filtering and here we are filtering our data with category type so we don't need that for now so what i will do i will simply remove that one and we also don't need that reset button so let's remove that code and save uh, so you can see that these buttons are gone and uh, do one more thing go to that dashboard and remove that dashboard page from there and let's give the padding bottom two and padding top three so now this will look something like that and here our pagination is also working fine and uh, as you can see that we are also getting their delete option so this is also fine so first of all let's do one thing let's go to our database and add some sample database and then we will try to fetch our data in our front end so let's go to our drizzle studio so this is our local drizzle studio and th basically this is connected with our online database so we need to add a tasks so let's add a record so first of all here we need a user id so let's go to the users tables unsaved so discard changes and let's go to the users so we need a user's id and uh, we have to also check for now which user is logged in logged in so let's go to our application so this is our local host and uh, one thing that i forgot to change we need to also change that title so let's go to uh, layout and here we need to also change that uh, metadata so let's replace that description and use that description a uh, simple task web app including a result and use your auth and let's save that and uh, this is a, this is not a template so basically this is our task app task web app so let's save this and uh, now you can see that we got our task web app so let's put this on the top now go to our result studio i forgot so we have to also check that currently which user have logged in so currently i have logged in with it uh, so i'm not sure which user already have i have logged in so let's log out and uh, see which user already have i have logged in so sign in okay i have logged in with a uh, github so let's so yeah github will won't work there because we are on the local host so try to sign in with google and uh, use that account so this is fine okay now let's go to the result studio and uh, we are logged in with that user so user id is one so now i will add a task so add a column so this is user id one so basically here why we need a user id so like i have logged in with that uh, user id one so i will only get a user id uh, one related data 
now let's add now let's add a title and here id will be default and here we have given a user id title and description let's also add a due date and our task is incompleted so we will add our task as a zero so zero means false and one means true on, on that case and this will automatically get a created and updated date so let's save and now we have to do a main thing like how we will fetch this data on our front end so for that here i will create a folder with the name of actions where we will perform our server actions and create a new file with the name of task actions.ts you can give that file name anything that you want but i think uh, task actions.ts is more preferable and on the top of that give that use server and here we need to import our db so we are importing our db from that db folder and if we will go to there so as you can see there on that db we have that index file and here this is linked with our database and here we are passing our database url and database auth token if this is required and we are also importing our schema there from our schema file so this is all of our schema and after that we are passing that schema on our result so likewise our db is connected so, so that's why we have imported our db there and now we need to create a function to fetch our data from our database or uh, to get our data from our database so here uh, i will use the export const get data and here we will use a async function and now first of all we will check that if our user is logged in or not if our user is logged in only then we will fetch that data so here we will write const and user and now we need to await and use that function that is get current user and this get current user is already created so let's first of all import and see if i will go to that file lib and sessions so on that sessions this get current user is already created this will check that our current user is logged in or not so with the help of that we will get our current user and now we will check if our user is not present so we will show error like user is not authorized and now comes our main part we need to create a variable and on that one const data and after that we will again await and now this is the main part now here we will fetch our data like we are fetching it from a normal sql so select db dot select and we need to select it from our task table because we need our tasks so this is our task table and we are importing our task from our schema and after that dot we need to add a condition where and after that we need to again use that eq let's import that eq so this is eq that uh, we have imported it from drizzle orm and now we will check a condition here and uh, let's do one thing like this will store our tasks so let's give that tasks and we need to also change it there tasks because here on our database we are also storing with the name of tasks so yeah obviously we will get a type error so this is the main part like everything is a fully type safe and when we are changing it one place so we will get an error so this is task task and tasks and now we need to check that where task dot uh, user id is equals to user dot id so this is our user and if this user id is matched with that uh, task id so we need to get that data and after that we need to order it by ascending so let's also import and uh, this will be like order dot id so with the help of that we will get our data and now just simply return our data and that's it that's it that all that we need to do so let's save that and copy that function and uh, go to the front end where we need to use that data so we wanted to use that data on our dashboard so let's go to the dashboard page and now i wanted to console now let's create a variable like uh, main data or let's do one thing this is our data and we are passing that data there so for now let's give that like main data equals to await and that function and we are importing it from actions task actions so we have imported our data and now let's check that data so this is our main data so for now let's comment that uh, previous data and uh, if you will see there on this console we can't see that uh, this data on a browser console because this is a server component so we can only see that data on our server console so this is our server console and for now we have only one data so as you can see that this is id1 user id1 so currently this function is working perfectly fine and uh, we are getting this data there and this is due date created date uh, and we are getting all these things are there now let's change the column and after that we will render that data in our ui so let's go to that data table component and go to the columns so let's see what are the columns that uh, we need for that application so if we will check our uh, main output ui the application that is deployed so we need a title description complete completed due date so first of all let's add a title so go to the code and uh, 
here for the accessor key we need to add their title and uh, for the column name we need to also give that title and what value will come there on that place so here we need a title value so that is this and main thing we need to also give the type of that one right now this type is getting from this example that we don't need for that one so we need a type for our task and here i have imported that task type from our database schema so if we will go there so this is our tasks and here we are exporting our type from there i have imported on our columns and after that we are just simply passing there and likewise here we have added our title and uh, this first column is for our checkbox so for now so we don't have to change anything on that place so on that one we just need to change the title and uh, likewise we need to change it for description so for the description we will again use that description key and this key means like if we will go to our schema so we need to pass that exact name that uh, we are using on our table so this is our description key title key user id key likewise these are the keys and basically these these are the keys because on our database the data will be stored with these key names so we have added our title and for the description let's see what we are doing here we have just changed accessor key and the title and on that one here we have created a, a variable on that variable we are storing that uh, key value raw data here we are checking that is our description is true or not this is not mandatory to pass a description sometimes user may not pass a description so that's why we are checking that condition so with the help of that we can check that user have passed a description or not so like if the description is true so we will simply show a description and if there is no description so we will simply show there no description and uh, with the help of that we are also changing the style like if there is no description so we are passing a font normal and text muted so let's save and so let me check you on a live application like uh, how this thing is working so let's add a new title and submit so as you can see there we have added a title and uh, like we haven't added a description so that's why we are getting a no description there and uh, we haven't also set it a date due date so that's why we are getting no due date let's go to our local host and we have set our description uh, after the description we need to add our completed title we don't need that category so remove that category so for our completed column here we are simply passing a completed and on our column title we are passing a completed so if we will see our final output so this is a completed column title and here we need that button switch button so for that button again we will go to that site cnui and we need to install that switch so copy the command to install that switch and go to your code and uh, on that new terminal add that command and there they have also given the example how we can use that switch component so simply just pass that switch like that <coughs> and if you will see there so we are giving the id or something like that <coughs> so this is installed now so let's import our switch component and here on that checked okay yeah on that checked we are passing that row dot get value completed so with the help of that if our uh, task is completed so this will show like checked this will show like switches on and after the completed we need a due date column so let's remove that amount and here from that copied code we are already getting a date so we just need to change this to due date and uh, this will be a due date and here this will be a due date and due date and now comes our main part we need to check our conditions so for that one we will use that code like formatted code like if there is no by default we will pass a not set we are assuming that user is not passing a due date and here we have also created is valid date so by default this is false and uh, we are checking the condition like if due date is true we are handling that date and here we are storing that date value we are getting that due date from our data and after that if this date is valid so we will store on that is valid date variable and after that if this date is valid so after that we will format and otherwise we will pass it like not set and finally we are passing that formatted date in our ui so this thing is also done so if i will save and uh, see the output of our current to do app so as you can see that currently uh, we are we haven't passed a correct data so that's why we are not getting any titles descriptions and uh, we are getting uh, this completed but uh, due date is also not set so for the due date we need to also handle the condition like here we are passing that styling if due date if there is a no date so we are showing it with text muted for text muted foreground so let's go to the description and i will simply copy that uh, ui so we need to pass that logic that is we will make it font normal and text muted foreground if it is invalid and let's save and now see 
so we are getting a text muted foreground and uh, on that table we don't need that type column so let's remove that type column so where is that type column so this is our type column so let's remove that and save so for now we have passed a wrong data so that's why our table is looking like that so for that let's go to our dashboard and on that dashboard page we don't need that sample data so let's remove and here we need that that data function and after that we are passing that data there and let's remove that main data function and let's save and see so as you can see that we got our data there read a, read a new book and this is our description and this is our due date and when we will try to search so this will won't work so for that what we need to do we need to go to the our data table components and again let's go to a data table and data table toolbar and on that place we need to pass a correct accessor key so here we need to pass a title and on that place also title and i think everything is fine now and uh, we don't need that thing this filter or date range all these things so let's remove that one let's save and see and when i will try to search anything else so there is no result and read read new book so see read new book so this is working fine and if i will try to search something else so this won't show us anything so this thing is working fine now we will create a function or whole logic to add a new data so first of all let's go to our task actions and to create a new data we need to write that function that is add task and on that function what things that uh, we need to require we need to require that title description due date and completed all these four things that uh, we need to require it from the user so user will input all these things and uh, then we will store these data on our database so again likewise uh, we are checking it for get task data we are checking that user is logged in or not if user is not logged in we will show that user that is error user is not authenticated and if user is logged in so we will add a data on our database that is db.insert and we are adding a data on a tasks table and after that we are passing that dot values and these tasks so these are the tasks here we are using a spread operator so this is simply mean like uh, you can also use it like that like title dot task dot title and uh, task dot uh, description but here we wanted to pass uh, we wanted to pass all of our data shortcutly so on that es6 they have provided that feature uh, we can use that spread operator and we can simply use that triple dot and task and after that what additional things that we need that is user id so user id will be that id like the currently who have logged in so we need to pass that user id and after that on that created at and updated at we need to pass that current date so here we have created our add task function now if we will go to our final application so for that adding a task here we are creating a form so what we will do we will create that component separately so let's go to the code and uh, we need to create that separate uh, we need to create that component separately and so for that let's uh, go to the source and components so we will create that pop-up or uh, dialog on that place so let's give that uh, component name that is add task and that is dialog dot tsx so first of all we need a form so to create a form uh, we will use that site and i will also give that site link in that video description so that is that is form builder so here what uh, we need so first of all we need a title and uh, the key will be title and this will be a string type and second we need a description and the key will be description and the type of that description will be string and uh, we don't need that email after that we need a due date and uh, for that due date let's go to our database and we need to pass that key and this will be a date type and this is not required this is not required and finally we need a boolean so here i will select a boolean and this will be completed or not the label will be completed and this will be completed and uh, we don't need all these things and this is also not required and now simply just click on that generate code so here we got all the code that we need so simply copy that code and go to there paste and uh, we are getting an error for our calendar so basically we won't use that calendar so let's remove that one we will use a uh, input calendar on that place so let's remove the pop over from there and uh, let's see how they are using it for that input so here we will use a form control and paste and now we just simply need to pass a uh, input here we need to pass a type and type will be a date and 
as you can see there we got a title description due date and completed so on the place of that due date we need to change that logic so i tried it by myself and we are getting lots of error so finally i got that solution so we need to convert that string and this is optional and if there is an invalid date so this will show that error invalid date is selected and now we are again getting an error so 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 we are getting an error because we are already using a due date there so we need to remove that due date and uh, i have removed the completed so let's add a completed and here i need to add this due date now everything is fine and uh, we are just only getting a one error that is switch so let's also import that switch component and on that form description we need to pass like mark this completed and this is completed and uh, for this one we don't need a description or our date and on our form item we need to use a with full class name and everything is fine so let's remove these two and to test this one we need to create a dialog so let's again go to a set scene and uh, now we need a dialog so let's go to that dialog and install that package and uh, go to our code so dialog is already installed so i don't want to install it again and now let's go to the code there how we can use that dialog so let's copy the dialog from there and uh, sorry i need to import all these import things there and uh, after that uh, we need it something like that so i will simply copy all the code so copy everything and paste it there and now what uh, we need to do on our dialog content we need to pass create task and uh, on the description we need to add fill in the detail below uh, for a new task and uh, now this is our header part and after that we need to add our form component so let's cut all this code from there and paste it there and uh, i think everything is fine there now on that trigger we need to change that button or uh, to open a dialog inside our dialog trigger we can pass our buttons so this is our button so here what uh, we are doing first of all let's import our plus icon from a lucid icon so by default on a mobile screen we are just only showing us this plus button and when we will come on a sm screen so i'm hiding that uh, button and after that i'm showing that button by default this will be hidden and on the sm screens this button will show so here we have added our dialog so let's give a proper name so this is add task dialog and let's save that one and uh, now we are we need that dialog so if you will see on our final output ui so our dialog is inside that toolbar so let's go to that toolbar so go to that uh, app and dashboard data table and uh, this is our uh, data table data table toolbar and inside that data table toolbar we need our button so this is our dev and uh, i think we need to paste that there so let's save that and see on our local server so this is our local host yeah so this is our local host and when i will click on the add button so yeah we got our dialog and everything is fine there and i think one thing is missing so this date is also fine username okay yeah so we need to change the placeholders and uh, we need to also add a cancel button so let's again go to the code and go to that dialog that is add task dialog and on the place of username i need to add a placeholder like task name and for the description we need to use a text area so here now we are getting an error because we need to install that text area component from our site cn ui and on the placeholder we are passing that task description so let's again go to the text cn and uh, here we need to search for text area text area and uh, copy and paste and if you will see there so there they have given the example how we can use that text area so this is the output and uh, this is the code simply copy that text area and we can pass the placeholder like that and this is installed so let's import that text area and this is also fine now we need to fix this button so for these buttons we will use a footer component of a dialog so let's import that footer and now to close our footer we will again use that close dialog and let's also again this close dialog from this conference ui dialog and inside that we are just simply passing our button and this button type is button because here we are using a two buttons uh, that is second one is submit so let's save and uh, go to our local host and again check so task name description and uh, mark this task as completed and we got a submit and uh, close so as you can see that this our validation is also working fine 
here we haven't added our title so that's why we were getting an error and for the description so let's go to the code and uh, for the description we don't need any requirements so let's save and now when i will click on that submit so see we are not getting any error and this is also not closing because for now we haven't added a logic to add or submit our uh, data in our database so let's close and now we need to call that function on that add data dialog that uh, we have written on that task actions so copy that add task and go to that dialog and uh, we need to add our data when a user will submit so add task import uh, add task function and we will handle this inside a try and catch block so that if we are getting any error so we can handle that easily so let's try try catch so we got a try catch block there and here we need to use a await and now this function will be also a async and here we need to pass our arguments so here we can do two things we can also pass simply like values and see we are not getting any issues everything is fine there and now when we have added our task successfully so we will show a toast dot success message so now we are getting an error for this toast so let's first of all let's go to our layout and uh, see here we are using a toaster so in that project we will use a sonar from our set cn ui so this is also like a toast so let's go to that set cn again and search for sonar so this is our sonar component and uh, now we will install that sonar component so let's first of all let's see how this will look so see this will look something like that so what we will do we will install that sonar component so control j and uh, paste and here you can also see the use case of that sonar component so let's copy that import code and uh, let's paste it there so it is like we are also using that toaster uh, from toaster component and sonar component so for now what i will do so i will import this second one as a sonar toaster so with the help of that we can use these both toasters and i will add it on that place and now what we need to do here we wanted to use so we need to just simply import that toast from sooner so we wanted to use it uh, on our add task so we got our toast and after that toast dot success and when this data is successful so this will show that uh, toast task has been created and uh, when our task has been created so we have to also close our uh, toast so for that we need to create a state so this is our form and here we will create a state there and now what we need to do on our dialog we need to pass that open to open and on change function we need to pass a set open so this will automatically handle because it have made according according to like that and now what we need to do on that function when this task is completed so we will show that set open is false so it means we are closing our dialog let's also handle our catch block so suppose if we are getting any error so we will show that toast dot error task has not been created and on the console we are uh, rendering that error and uh, we are getting uh, some error yeah so we, uh, we have to also import that use state hook from react and now we are using a use state so we need to also convert that page into a client component so let's write use client and i think everything is fine there so let's test this one how it is working so let's go to our application so we are getting some error yeah now this is fine <laughs> and uh, let's try to add our task so we will add it like title and description and uh, let's add a 22 and submit the task has been created so it means our task has been created but uh, as you can see that this is not showing on that place so let's go to our database and see so let's refresh so yeah so we got our task there so we got our task there on title description and uh, we are not getting a due date so we will see why and created at and updated at so everything is fine so but why this is not reflecting on a ui so let's go to the ui so if i will refresh so yeah when i'm refreshing then i'm getting that data but this is not a good approach like uh, when we are refreshing then we are getting our data and here we need to also handle that date so first of all let's handle that when we are adding that data so why this is not adding instantly or not showing on the ui instantly so let's go to our code and uh, where we have created that function so what we need to do like uh, whenever we are performing any action uh, on our database like create update or delete so we need to revalidate it's kind of we need to refresh and we will import that revalidate path from next calche and here we are revalidating our application so let's save and see 
so I will enable add something like uh, and there is another problem this is also not resetting these values so we will also solve this issue so like uh, first of all let's add like this is new task added and click on that submit yeah so this is getting instantly so first of all let's handle the date so let's go to the code and go to the add task dialog and here what we will do for the due date let's try to use that code value dot due date is true so we will pass that due date and on the place of that we need to use a we need to use that due date otherwise null so let's save this and see uh, it again so again we are getting that issue so i got the issue so we need to add their due date so let's save this and uh, try it again so go to our uh, browser and let's try to add that uh, third task and submit so here we are why we are getting this date so i think the problem is that on so i think the problem is that if you will see our tasks and uh, when we will go to our schema and uh, when we'll go to our schema so here we have set it to a this due date and uh, like let's go to the schema so here we have given that name to the due date and on the actual backend database we have written a due date this one so but now we are changing or updating that data so we need to use that column name here we need to also change this to this due date due date due date and let's save and uh, see it again so here we are getting error so yeah we need to also change on that place and let's save and reload and all the errors are gone from there and let's save and now check on the ui so here i will add a fifth task and enter so there was no issue on that place actually uh we haven't handled that column thing correctly so let's go to the columns again and here if we will check for that due date column so here we are adding a new date and this is wrong so we need to remove that thing and now let's save and now let's see the output so now we are getting a proper no no that so we need to add uh, it like not set not set yeah not set and now let's try to add a new data so let's refresh and uh, this is new data and enter so this is new data and uh, yeah everything is working fine and uh, now let's again try to this is like 11th 11th data 11th data and now this time task will be completed and now due date will be 23 and this is description okay so don't go for the spelling and submit and now you can see that we got uh, everything properly and uh, this date format is also getting fine and still there is a one issue so let's also resolve that one so like here we are adding our data so let's uh, let's go to that uh, add dialog and here we are adding our data so maybe this will take some time like uh, maybe one second or 100 millisecond so on that time we need to also show a loading state on our ui so how we can do that so for that one we will use a, a use transition hook that is uh, provided by the react so simply let's write a write a use transition and here we need to add is pending like our first state is first state will be loading state and second state like uh, we need to pass that function that will take some time so we will give that second name is so this is second one is add transition so this is the function and inside that function we need to pass all of our logic that uh, we are fetching a data and uh, so let's use that add transition function inside that function on submit and uh, this will be a async function and inside and inside that function i will just simply cut that code and paste it there and now we need to use that add task is pending uh, state and uh, where we will show our loading so suppose i wanted to show our uh, loading state there so we can show it like that inside that button if our add pending task is like loading so we will show that icon and uh, on that icon we have added a animate spin and let's import that icon from react icons and let's save and everything is fine there now and now let's see now let's try to add a new task so this is 12th task and uh, click on that submit so now you have seen that we got a little loading state and basically on the local everything is fine but when we will deploy our application then uh, we can see that loading state easily so like if i will show you on my deployed application so let's try to add some data and click on that submit so now you can see that we are getting a proper loading and our data is added so we got our data there
and let's again go to our form and here we are again getting our problem this is not resetting our form we are getting our previous data so for that one we can do one thing let's go to the submit and here when everything is done we can reset our forms there like with the help of that form dot reset and uh, we are getting that form from there so let's save and test our application again so this is 13th task submit and when i will go to the second page so now you can see that this is 13th task and when i will click on that one so this form is reset so this is fine and let's go to the first page and when i will try to search anything like uh, this one so this have filtered that is specific data here we have added our add task flow completely now we will create a function to switch our task and we will apply it on that place so to create a toggle task we will create a toggle task function and uh, so for that we need to go to that task actions and here we will create a toggle task function like we have created a get data and uh, likewise add task so this will be our toggle to do we are again checking that user is logged in or not and if user is not logged in so here we are showing the error and if the user is logged in so here on that function we are getting the id task id and let's rename this toggle task and uh, for that one we need to also import that not from result orm and here we are using that update db dot update and we are updating on that task table and after that here we are passing that task dot completed and here we are using a not operator and uh, we are checking that id here task id is equals to that id so that will only change that particular task and after that revalidating so this will refetch the data on the front end so we need to call that function on that place so we need to go to the columns so search for columns and uh, before that let's close that one and uh, copy that double task function and uh, go to the columns and here we need to search for completed so this is my due date and uh, this is completed so here again we will use that use transition hook because again we are going to perform some action that will take some time on our database so let's import that use transition likewise we have used that use transition uh, like uh, when we are trying to add our data now we will create our handle toggle task function and on that function here what we are doing so here we need to import our uh, toggle task so we have imported our toggle task from our actions and here we need to pass the id so we can pass our id like that so we are getting that id it from row and when we will type row dot original so you can see that we are getting all the options like completed created at description so we need to pass the id so let's remove that one and after that if this task is completed so we will show a toast and uh, we need to import a toast from sonar and uh, we are showing the success message task marked as not completed if the task is already completed so we are uh, just showing a positive toast and if there is any error so we are showing a toast error and after that we need to copy that handle toggle function and uh, we need to call that on on change on check on change that function and here we need to also add a three dot icon so we have to do it like that like uh, here we have created that state and if this is true so we will show that loading so let's also import that icon so we will show that uh, loading and otherwise we will show that switch function so let's save this and uh, when i will reload and now click on that one so as you can see that this is working fine and uh, this is also checking and changing on that our database so when i will go to my database so on the database this will save as a one if our task is true or completed so this will save as one so now go to our application now we don't need that form builder so cut that one and this completed is also complete this completed is also completed now we need to add a edit and delete so we will add our edit and delete something like that so first of all let's create a edit dialog so as you can see there we are using the same ui that uh, we have used for add task so we will again go to that components just copy that file and uh, paste it there again and we need to rename that one edit task dialog dot tsx and uh, we have created our edit task dialog so let's also change that to uh, edit dialog and uh, we have to also create a function to edit our dialog so let's again go to that task actions and here we will create our edit task and here this is the code for that edit task so here first of all we have created a type and here on that new task so this is our new task and we are extending we are extending only a id so this will include all this title description due date completed and uh, this id also and after that we are passing that type inside that so that we will get the id and whatever the values that we wanted to update we can update easily so again here we are doing the same thing we are checking that user is logged in or not and if the user is logged in so from that task we are separating id and all the data so this is the task on that task we have already set the id because this is the edit on that edit task we will get all the data we just need to update so here for that one here we are using update function and after that we are getting all the data 
and uh, whatever we wanted to update we need to pass on that function so this will update only those one and uh, here we need to also change that updated at so on that place this will add a current date and again we are checking the condition where task id will be equal to that id that uh, id that we are passing and again we are refetching so that uh, this will show on the front end again so let's save this and we need to use that edit function on our edit task so search for edit task dialog and uh, we need that edit task dialog there so just replace it like that and uh, import that edit task function there and since it is an edit dialog so it means we are assuming that uh, that we are already getting a default data on that one so this means here on that component we will pass our task and all the props that is required and this will be the type of that edit task dialog and this will extend that dialog this is the dialog of that one that is set in dialog and here we need to also import our task so this is our task so we have imported our task schema and pass to that task and uh, so that we need to copy that edit task dialog and pass it there so we need to also pass all the default values so for the default values we will again pass it like that uh, title will be task dot title like that and task dot description description like on that component we will use that component if we will go to the front end so we will, we will pass that component on that place and uh, on that component we will get all the data from that place so we are assuming that we are getting the task of that particular row and after that here we are passing that task dot title likewise task dot description and uh, if this is not present so we will pass empty and uh, task dot completed due date like that and now here we need to update our edit task function so our edit task function will be like that edit task and again we are passing edit dot task here we have created a type so whatever the values we will get it there so we will pass on that place and and obviously id will won't change so that's why we are passing that task dot id and on the other places we are passing that values dot title like uh, this value we will get it from that input box this input box and uh, we haven't created a pop-up so this is the final output so let's go to on our app yeah so we need to add uh, edit and delete now let's also change the name for that add because here we are using a uh, edit so let's give that is update pending and start uh, transition let's start update transition and uh, this is the is updating so here let's add is updating now here we need to also update like if you will see the final output so we need to pass a state from that place to open and close our dialog so for that one we don't need that dialog and we also don't need that open and uh, on change props so on that place we will pass these props that we are getting it from on that place and this is the prop of all these dialogues so how we will close our form so for that one let's remove that one and uh, and see here we are getting that props so on that place we will pass it from our parent component so here we will uh, write it like props dot on change open and we will pass it false like that and here we are done with everything and as you can see that we haven't added a on click so let's see how we can do that so basically we need that dialog on our uh, columns so let's copy that dialogs and go to our columns so this is our columns and uh, we need to go to that actions so here we don't need that data table row actions so here what uh, we will do we will create that div with the flex uh, justify center and item center and uh, now we need an edit button to open our edit model so for that one we will use that button this is the button that uh, we are getting from search and ui let's import that button and uh, we need to also import that icon so that we are importing from lucid icons and now we need to also create a state so before that cut all this code and we need to write it like that return and after that like that so that we can create our state easily so this is our state that is so edit dialog and set edit dialog and here we are using a use state like this is simply like a open and set open so let's use a use state hook there here we are just simply toggling our dialog and now we need to also import this edit dialog so let's copy this edit dialog and uh, go to that columns and paste it there so basically this edit dialog will not be visible on the ui part but uh, when we will click on that button on that edit button so this will show now here we need to pass our tasks so on the task we need to pass our all the task of row so here you can pass it like row dot original so this will contain all the data of that row like id user id title and all these things 
now we need to also open and close so on that open we will pass that so edit dialog like that and we need to also pass that prop that is on open change so basically what this will do if we will go to that add task dialog so when we will submit our uh, edit dialog so after the submitting this will close that pop-up so not on that place we need to go to that edit dialog so this is our uh, edit dialog so we are passing that props dot on change false so with the help of that this will close that pop-up and uh, we are done with that edit dialog so let's see on the ui part so this is our app yeah so we got uh, edit so yeah we are also getting that value uh, read a new book and uh, we are getting date and completed so let's change it with uncompleted and uh, let's change date to 22 and here let's add a edit edited and uh, edited so let's save so edited edited and uh, this is false and date is also changed so yeah this edit is uh edit is also working perfectly fine now here we have to add a delete so for the delete we need to create another dialog to delete so on our components we will create a new file that is delete task dialog and here we will use set cn ui dialog so if we will go to the set cn and here we need to search it for search it for dialog so we need to use something kind of that but uh, here we need a delete we need a uh, something kind of that ui but on that alert dialog we are not getting a close option so basically we will use that ui and uh, we will use a dialog component so for the dialog component let's go to the dialog and uh, suppose we need that one so let's copy the code let's copy all the code from there and uh, go to our code like that and likewise we have done for edit we will also create a props for our delete so this will be delete task props and here we need to import a row from tiny stack this is the type and uh, we need to also import a task and now let's give the name of that component delete task dialog and here we will pass all the props show trigger so i will show you what is that show trigger and this is the on success function like uh, what we need to do on that on success and here we are passing all the dialogues properties like uh, we have done for that edit and after that simply let's pass that edit dialog there and now we need to change the ui for our dialog so if you will see the final output here we are getting a delete and when i will select anything so we are also getting a delete button there so what i have done i have created a one delete uh, alert dialog because this is doing the same thing but there's only one difference like here we can select a multiple items and here we can only delete one but uh, i've handled it with one function so we will create a logic according to that so basically this show trigger is doing that thing if the show trigger is true so this will show that button so we will create a one function and we will use it on that place and on this place also so let's see how we can do that so if our show trigger is true so we will show that dialog trigger otherwise we won't show that dialog trigger and here we are using a trash icon and uh, this is exactly that button and uh, if this show trigger is true so we will show our delete button otherwise we won't show and uh, we need to change our uh, dialog title this is are you absolutely sure and uh, we need to also change our description so this actions can be undone this will permanently delete your so this we are calculating the length of our task how many tasks uh, we are deleting so this here we are simply using a task dot length and uh, here we are also checking that if the task length is equals to one so this will be task otherwise s from your server and here we don't need that dev we need a footer and inside that footer we need a close button or cancel button so we are using that dialog dot close and uh, we need to import it from components slash ui and inside that we are just simply passing a cancel button and uh, after that we need a delete button so for our delete button we will give that variant equals to destructive and on that on click we will pass our uh, handle delete function and here we will again create a transition and we will pass that is loading thing and we need to also import that reload icon so let's import that reload icon now let's create that handle delete function and is delete pending transition so for the is delete transition so this is our is delete transition let's import that transition and uh, here we are using a uh, hooks so let's give that use client and uh, let's remove that unused code and now one thing is left that is handed delete on that page so we need to create that uh, delete function so again we need to go to that task actions so for the delete we will create that function like that we will accept as an id or a number of ids so maybe user wanted to delete a one id so if a user wanted to delete a one id like here so this will delete only one data or a one row and if a user wanted to delete a multiple ids like on that case so here we need to pass some multiple ids so that's why here we are doing it like that uh, in the form of array and obviously first of all we are checking that the user is logged in or not and after that is this array or not and uh, after that here we are adding our data in our database like that 
and let's save and uh, we need to import that create task function on our dialog and we need to perform that action there so let's create uh, that function so this is our handle delete function and inside that handle delete function we are using that start delete transition so i've already told you like uh, we are using that start delete transition because basically this won't do anything in our code but uh, what this will do when our code is uh, loading so basically this gives a loading state when this operation is completed so this loading state will be false so with the help of that loading state we are showing our loading there and let's import a lead task and let's import a toast from sonar and now after that uh, if our task is deleted so we are simply saying that task is deleted with the help of toast if we are getting any error so we are also handling that error there and on that success if we wanted to do additional thing like uh, we wanted to close our uh, model something like that but here we are already closing our uh, model and if we want to do any additional task i will show you what why we are using this one so we need to add that on success and now we need to use that delete dialog on our columns again so let's go to the columns and like uh, we have done it for edit dialog we need to do the same for delete task so likewise here uh, we have created that button with the help of destructive variant and let's import that trust icon and now we need to create a state like we have created a state for our edit like to toggle our dialog so this will be so delete task dialog so you need to pass it there and now let's add our pop-up so this is our delete task dialog let's paste it there and now we need to pass our additional props so let's also import that component and here on open we are passing that uh, show delete dialog and on change we are passing that on change and uh, with the help of that show trigger here on that list we don't want it to show that button so that's why we have made this false and everything is done there so let's save and see our application so we are getting this edit profile button also why i think there's a one issue on our delete task yeah so we need to also remove that trigger so let's remove that trigger and let's save and see now this is fine and let's test our delete is working fine or not so we are not able to open our delete so i don't know why so let's go there and okay yeah so we forgot to pass a props so because of that this is not opening so we need to pass a props there and uh, we are getting all the props from there so this is the dialog props so let's save and see this task is deleted okay let's refresh and test it again let's see i wanted to delete that one so delete yeah this task is deleted and our pop-up is also closing so everything is fine so let's try to delete that one yeah this task is also deleted so our delete is just working fine now we need to do one thing if i will click on that place so as you can see there this is showing but uh, here we haven't added that uh, delete functionality so this is already coming uh, from our table that from our data table so let's go to on our toolbar so let's go to the code and uh, search for toolbar and here for now we have added that delete button but here on that place we need to show our dialog uh, basically a delete dialog so i will remove that one and pass that logic and we need to import that uh, delete task dialog and let's also import that task from our db and here everything is fine and here we are getting that function get filtered through and after that basically here with the help of that logic we are passing all the selected rows and after that what we are doing on success we are also doing like uh, unselected so let's try one thing so let's cut this one and save for now and uh, see so let's refresh this is our local host and uh, let's delete these two tasks so this is working fine two tasks and this is deleted so now you can see that our task is deleted but uh, we have selected on that place we are getting selected so let's undo and paste it again and let's save and now if i will delete that one so our task is also deleted and now we are not getting that checked so that's why we need that on our success we need to also make that selected rows false let's try to delete that one these two yeah everything is fine so let's add some data so all the flow is completed and uh, let's try to search new so this search is also working let's enhance that ui and uh, so for that we need to increase that height so let's go there on the input and uh, let's remove that height and uh, for our data table view options so let's go to that component and here let's comment that button to small and now i think this is fine and here let's refresh okay so remove that height also here we are also getting a one issue so we are getting a lot of space there so for that one let's go to the dashboard and see what is the issue so everything is fine there so i think there's a problem on that layout so for the layout we will change the styling so on that tab let's use that styling 
and we need to also change that header height header css let's give that uh, padding 3 and header will be 16 so let's save everything and see and now we just need to remove that border from our dashboard so let's remove that border from there and uh, this comment also we don't need these two files so our whole application is built successfully so let's try again all the flow ones so here let's try to add test data and uh, this is description and check select a date and uh, for now this is uncompleted so we have our test data and let's try to edit so this is edited and uh, let's also edit this one and let's select a 23 and mark as completed so this is our test data edited and everything is fine now let's try to delete that data so delete so this is also deleting so our all the flow is working fine on our local now it's time to test our application on our main server so let's go to the versal and uh, let's check that link again click on that sign in with google and uh, we are still getting that error so for now i'm not sure what error we are getting but uh, i think this is something related to a google console but uh, this google signing is working perfectly fine so we can sign in with github and this is working fine and uh, now let's try to deploy our uh, all the code so before that let's close everything and uh, see everything is fine or not so what we will do again we will build our application so let's close that terminal and here we will type npm run build so if there will be any issue in our application so this will check and tell us to resolve but i hope we won't get any issue so let's see so yeah everything is fine so now it's time to commit so like uh, project done and here i will press ctrl enter so first of all let's save all the code and pink changes and now let's again go to the versal and see here we should get uh, another commit so let's go to the task manager app again and now this is in the process building process so after that we will check it and our project is done so we need to check it on the live everything is fine so now our latest commit is merged to the main so let's again check it so we are logged in with uh, github so let's try to add some data and submit so our data is adding this is fine and uh, try to edit so edit and this is edited and uh, let's add some date and submit so yeah this is edited or edited is also working fine let's delete and basically this is deleting it from our live server and now let's try to add some again and again let's check uh, maybe our uh, google is working now so click on that sign in still we are getting some error i'm not sure about that one so now finally i found the solution of that authentication issue i have just redeployed that application again with the new project and this is the project that task manager app 2 and when we will check this one so this is the live url of that application so let's go on that live url on the google console i have added the url of that link and after that this is working perfectly fine so when i will again click on that sign in with google so here we are again getting options to log in with accounts i will select my second account and as you can see that this is perfectly working fine and i have also changed the github config and on that config i have configured that url so with the help of that github sign in is also working perfectly fine so if i will click on that sign in with github so this flow is also working fine so here we have completed our whole task app successfully and if you enjoyed that video so don't forget to like share and comment on that video like uh, tell me share your views how was your experience with that one let me know the next video idea and if you have any suggestions regarding this video or any other video so let me know in the comment box for sure and i will see you in next one until then goodbye